Hello and good day to you, our dear viewers. Welcome to today's episode on Afia Health and Lifestyle Interview Series. Uh, my name is Olua Remileko, and today we'll be having uh, Dr. Lawal talk to us on preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is basically seen in pregnant women, and um, it is a very one of the leading causes of um, uh, mortality in pregnant women. So um, we'll be dissecting and going straight into it. But before we do so, I would like to introduce um, Dr. Lawal to us, and I'd like us to know him better. Dr. Lawal Oyenei, MLI, is a senior lecturer and acting director, Campus Community Partnership Office of the University of Medical Sciences, Ondo State, as well as former acting head of Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, 2018 to 2020. He is also a consultant at the Affiliate Teaching Hospital in Ondo and an examiner and dissertation reviewer of the Faculty of Obstetrics and Gynecology, O and G, of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, as well as West African College of Surgeons. He is a member of the Ondo Health Research Ethnic Committee since inception in 2015. He obtained his West African Examination Council certificate with record distinctions in all subjects from the International School, University of Lagos, in 1987. He proceeded to the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, from where he obtained his medical degree in 1994 and stayed back at Lagos University Teaching Hospital for his internship program the same year. In 1997, during his National Youth Service at the Federal Medical Center at Belkuta, he passed his primary examination in O and G at first sitting and gained admission to begin his postgraduate studies at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. He obtained both fellowship of the West African College of Surgeons and the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria from the institution in 2003 and 2004, respectively. He completed the senior executive course, 38 of the prestigious National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies in November 2016, and acquired the fellowship of the International College of Surgeons the following year. His first port of call as a specialist was at the Lagoon Hospitals in Lagos between 2004 and 2009. During that period, he was the pioneer head of the Group Infection Control Unit, thereby contributing to the hospital's issuance in 2010 of a gold certification, the first in sub saharan Africa, by the Joint Commission International, the world's leading healthcare accreditation organization. In February 2010, he was appointed the pioneer chief medical director of the Mother and Child Hospital, Akure, the flagship purpose-built 100-bed facility offering tertiary-level care to pregnant women and children free of charge. During his stewardship, the facility grew to become one of the busiest and the best-run maternity centers in Nigeria, with over 16,000 safe deliveries, averaging 15 to 20 deliveries daily. He was also pioneer CMD of the Mother and Child Hospital in Ondo City from 2012 to 2015, as well as two-term chairman of the Committee on Confidential Inquiry into Maternity Deaths in Ondo State, CEMDOS, from 2010 to 2016. As an advocate on maternal health issues and trainer on emergency obstetric care with emphasis on postpartum hemorrhage and eclampsia, he was contracted to train over 500 healthcare professionals in all Lagos state-owned maternity centers between 2008 and 2009. He was also invited by Venture Strategies Innovation, VSI, a California-based not-for-profit organization, to train over 1,000 healthcare professionals in Pakistan in October 2010. Dr. Oyenei's special areas of interest are phytomaternal medicine, hospital management and health policy formulation. He has over 40 scientific papers published and or present at various national and international forums, including use of mesoprostol by obstetricians and gynecologists in Nigeria, which was nominated for the Majeko Domi Prize for best paper by a young scientist at the 41st annual scientific conference of the Society of Gynecology and Obstetrics of Nigeria, SOGON, in Benin in 2007. 
He is also an article reviewer for various journals, including Africa's Journal of Reproductive Health and PLOS 1. His hobbies include traveling, reading, and watching movies. He is an indigene of Ondo City in Ondo State, happily married and blessed with three children. Um, welcome to Afia Health and Lifestyle Interview Series, sir. Um, Dr. Lawa, we are very, very happy to have you with us. And we are looking forward to learning a whole lot from you, from the wealth of knowledge and experience that you, you've acquired over the years. Um, a lot of our viewers are waiting to hear from you, sir. So without wasting time, we'd just like to go straight into the, into the interview, sir. Um, Dr. Lawal, in your own words, and as simple as possible, because a lot of our viewers are not in the um, medical world, what exactly is preeclampsia? Okay, thank you very much, Luar and Leku. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, in layman's terms, preeclampsia is um, part of the spectrum of conditions that we tend to call hypertensive diseases in pregnancy. Now, everybody knows what, what hypertension is. That's um, elevated blood pressure, and um, it affects male, female, young and old, and has various causes. Was a particular uh, entity of hypertensive disease in pregnancy that is specific for pregnant women. And it's a whole spectrum. And it extends from just the simple hypertension in a pregnant woman to preeclampsia and then to eclampsia and equally. So, preeclampsia as a component of hypertensive disease in pregnancy is when you have the high blood pressure that is the hypertension associated with significant kidney damage that manifests as spillage of protein in the urine what we call proteinuria the patient who has preeclampsia essentially has a combination of severely mostly severely elevated blood pressure and protein in the urine that tells us that the kidneys are getting involved and are being damaged. And that strictly speaking the definition of a prayer cancer. All right. Um, thank you very much, sir. So simply put, you are saying that um, this is um, in pregnant women, we have um, when we have high blood pressure and um, protein in their urine due to uh, kidney damage. Uh, when you say high blood pressure, what range? Which are we looking at? Um, okay. Uh, when when do we begin to suspect? Okay, generally speaking, um, when somebody has high blood pressure, we're talking about a blood pressure reading of equal to or greater than 140 over 90. That is 140 systolic and 90 diastolic blood pressure. Most people are conversant to this if you've had a blood pressure taken. And the range of normal should actually be between <clears throat> 160 and 130, 80. So when you have okay. a blood pressure reading of 140, 90 and above, you, 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 you are allowed to diagnose high blood pressure. Now, when it becomes a more advanced condition, where it's getting complicated, that's when you have the pre here. And the blood pressure can actually go as much higher than 140, 90. And you can have as much as 160, 110, 160, 120, etc. And um, but the key is that the proteinuria is what tells us that the kidneys are getting damaged, and um, that is it. So it's a it's a it's a disease. We call it a disease of signs, and not necessarily a disease of symptoms. Meaning some patients may have no complaints whatsoever. They think they are healthy. It is where you do the blood pressure and you find it to be high. When you test the urine and you find out that it contains protein, that usually the alarm goes off. And yes, sometimes it manifests with certain signs that are quite, uh, certain symptoms that are quite ominous. For example, uh, the patient starts to retain fluid, especially around the face. The eyes, you see a pregnant woman whose eyes, whose face is swollen, the nose is twice the size, the eyes are 
the bags all over. And then the hands are swollen, the feet are specially swollen. And uh, just the sign that you retain fluid. You see. Sometimes they also come with headache, they come with upper chest pain, uh, lower chest pain, sorry. They come with a um, uh, feeling of wanting to vomit and vomit. It's also a sign that things are getting worse and worse. So, uh, but then, but then, for making a diagnosis, you need to run this um, measurement and test that is the blood pressure and the urine. Right. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, looking at the fact that uh, there is no uh, for the uh, for the prevention. Uh, it is still, there's still a lot of work to be done. So majority of the work to do when it comes to uh, making sure that it doesn't lead to um, mortality in pregnant women, especially in the very, very, um, uh, pre, uh, what, what do I call them now? In people that are predisposed, that is the yes. uh, first time pregnant yeah, women and yes. the young, yeah, the people that are at risk, yes, sir. Um, majority of the work on this point will be majorly on the health providers. Um, on the on the patient side, they need to go for proper antenatal antenatal care so that they can be um, checked and proper uh, test can be done to ensure that oh it is nipped in the bud as early and as quickly as possible. So looking at all of those and putting into uh, perspective, what is your advice for patients and health workers in general? Well, thank you. That's a very good question. Um, what I would say is that um, I doubt if there's any uh, healthcare professional uh, who has not come across patients with hypertensive disease pregnancy, especially pregnant here in our clients. So what I would say is that there's a need to bring in a lot of awareness and sensitization in the general populace among the healthcare professionals. And um, it, it worries me sometimes that we have our pregnant women. So from my own survey in my locality in, in those states, uh, they, they, they seem to know more about um, HIV AIDS. They seem to know more about even COVID than preeclampsia. Whereas preeclampsia is a major killer, you know, of our women. So we need to we need to do a lot. And again, I must commend this platform. We really need to do a lot in um, in, uh, in in propagating as healthcare professionals. And as a matter of fact, the World Health Organization has recognized twenty second of May, you know, as a World Preeclampsia Day. And um, they are also mindful of how important twenty second of May. So they are also mindful of how important it is to try and get people to be aware. So if you were to ask me, that has to be the first pivot for healthcare professionals. We must talk about it to our women so that they are aware of this. By the time they are aware of preeclampsia, they will realize the value of having their blood pressure taken. If sitting having their blood pressure taken and you will test it at, at the right opportunity. So that's one thing. And then of course, our healthcare professionals also need to be aware of the modern uh, treatment regimen for preeclampsia eclampsia. Especially once it occurs, preeclampsia is such a terrible condition that it's multi-systemic, meaning it actually has the potential to affect all the all the organs, vital organs in the body. I mentioned the kidneys, which are quite particularly susceptible, and quite a number of many patients with preeclampsia can end up with a kidney failure. It also affects the, the liver, it can affect the blood by reducing the, the number of platelets. Uh, which is a special component of blood that is good for clotting, which which allows uh, when you when you have an injury, the blood to thicken and uh, clog that site. So they tend to have this bleeding disorder. It particularly affects the brain as well, and causes the brain to swell. And if that is unchecked, can actually lead to convulsion, and that's where we have eclampsia. So the term preeclampsia essentially means that uh, the, the, the condition before the woman starts to convulse, starts to fit. And that is usually a very, very bad sign, a very bad prognosis. So the modern methods of treatment is important for healthcare professionals, having been able to spread that awareness. And then, um, you know, uh, using drugs to treat uh, like 
the new forms of state drug, high hepatitis drugs like labetalol and um, uh, labetalol, uh, napedipine, and aldomet, um, alpha methyl dopa. Those are the kind of drugs that we tend to use as first line drugs. And of course, to prevent the sequelae of swelling of the brain that can cause a convulsion, we, we tend to advocate magnesium sulfate injection. And there's a regimen for that as well. So it's important the healthcare professionals are aware at all levels that we must exercise the women in the clinic beyond talking about nutrition, beyond talking about the value of breastfeeding, etc. Let them know there is such a condition that kills our women. They need to be aware of the drugs, the latest drugs you should take. And there must be a ready source of referral for women who develop this problem. Because more often than not, the only way to cure pregnancy and cope is to have that woman delivered safely. As long as that pregnancy is there, the woman with pregnancy is likely going to continue to suffer for it. So healthcare professionals must be aware that when I see a woman with pregnancy, I must know the cost of to send that to, to avert the significant mobility, the illnesses as well as death for the mother as well as for the baby. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, um, so talking about pregnant women, because of course, uh, they are the, they are, it is in pregnant women that will find them preeclampsia and the whole spectrum, like you have mentioned. What does um, having preeclampsia mean? Um, what is the significance of having this, uh, this uh, should I call it the, the, this disease or these uh, symptoms in pregnant women? Yes, um, hypertensive disease in pregnancy generally is a global scourge, <clears throat> particularly the preeclampsia uh, component of it. As a matter of fact, it's a leading cause of maternal death worldwide, especially in um, less developed and developing countries like us in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, um, death from preeclampsia or its uh, older brother, eclampsia, tend to, in many um, research studies, tend to be the commonest cause of death in our environment. Definitely among the top three in any any research uh, output. And then um, <clears throat> when we talk about, we're looking at about 20% at least of causes of um, maternal death can be attributed to hypertensive in pregnancy, especially preeclampsia and eclampsia. Uh, when you when you tie that in the fact that only about um, five to eight percent of pregnant women come down with hypertensive disease in pregnancy. Um, one to three percent will end up with preeclampsia. And that's a huge figure in a country like Nigeria where you have you know about 90 to 100 million uh, women, out of which about maybe 40, 30, 40 million uh, you know, are within the reproductive age group. So we're looking at millions. And then um, when you come down again, uh, uh, preeclampsia eclampsia is probably responsible for over 70,000 maternal death globally. Nigeria alone, where we have overall, uh, the last survey shows that maybe we may have up to 70,000 maternal deaths as well. 20% of it, you know, can lead a lot of women who are succumbing to uh, preeclampsia and uh, eclampsia. So in, if there's any condition really that our pregnant women should be wary of, it has to be pre-eclampsia, eclampsia. And I'm one of those that feel that um, there's not been enough, you know, uh, enough awareness on the cause of pre-eclampsia, eclampsia. And uh, I commend your platform for, for, you know, for making this uh, your topic for today. So it's that important because it's killing a lot of our women. Wow. Um, thank you, Dr. Lawa. Um, looking at the importance, especially from the statistics you've given, it shows that um, a lot of awareness needs to be done. It shows that um, a lot of focus and attention needs to um, go into uh, preeclampsia and eclampsia so as to generally reduce the mortality rate in pregnant women across 
the world and Nigeria in particular. Because of course, um, most of our viewers are Nigerians and that is our target, uh, target audience. Um, looking at the importance, what exactly should pregnant women do in order to uh, prevent, avoid, and uh, make sure they are safer as regards to eclampsia? Okay, um, that, that's a very good question. Um, now, uh, the core, in when you talk about prevention, uh, we talk about three levels of um, prevention for diseases generally. We have the primary prevention, secondary, and then we have the tertiary. That's like different grades, first grade, first level, second level, third level. The first okay. um, prevention, first level or the primary prevention is to prevent the disease from occurring in the first place. The secondary level is to, uh, to ameliorate the complication once the disease has, has occurred. And then the third phase is actually to prevent the worst form of complications to the condition. So uh, hypertensive diseases, we know that it's more common or it tends to manifest more in women carrying pregnancies for the first time. The class we call primary parent. That is the woman carrying a pregnancy for the first time. We know it tends to occur in the very young mothers, usually ages of less than 20, and much older mothers, usually ages of 35 and above, 40 and above. And we also know that um, it, it tends to occur along with many other um, chronic conditions. A woman, for example, who already has a chronic hypertension, even before she got pregnant is more at risk of developing the variant of preeclampsia when she gets pregnant. So having identified this um, particular uh, cohort of women who are at risk, you can try to target them during their antenatal period, that is when they are pregnant, when you're, they're coming to the hospital. And essentially, like I said earlier, what is involved is making sure that their blood pressures are taken at every visit and the urine is tested. As if there is a way all pregnant women can have their blood pressure taken at least once a month and urine tested, we will be able to identify uh, cases of um, preeclampsia uh, simply because we'll, that will be the secondary level. Now, in terms of preventing it from happening at all, there's not been a lot of progress in that. We know how to identify, we know how to treat it early. Preventing it is still subject to a lot of research. But there's mean some people have, have um, tried to use aspirin, especially in women who have had it in previous pregnancies and are now pregnant and you want them not to develop the preeclampsia again, which is the uh, attendant uh, consequences. So it's, 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 it's some people have uh, prescribed the use of aspirin, low dose aspirin. Some have described the use of calcium lactate and uh, etc. So it's still mostly very quite experimental. Um, but the key, I must tell you, is, is qualitative and medical care. Our women have to be aware that there's such a condition and make sure that whenever they are attending the clinic, their blood pressure should be tested and they are urine tested. Because preeclampsia often does not necessarily manifest a significant complaint. And, um, and that's what perhaps makes it so dangerous. So qualitative and clinical care is key with a vigilance, especially among the high risk patients I talked about. The first timers, the very young, the advanced age, and those with uh, associated conditions. If we're able to do that, we'll be able to go a long way. Because especially maternal mortality from preeclampsia is, is a problem of developing countries. The Western societies and developed nations have especially been able to curb the attendant risks and mortality and death from preeclampsia. They do have it, but they're able to identify it early because of the level of quality of their care. So it's a condition that may not necessarily be uh, preventable, but it can definitely be controlled and treated. Talked about um, what the pregnant women should do, that is essentially going for antenatal 
and um, to ensure that their blood pressure is checked when necessary and all. And we've also talked about health, pro health professional, making sure that... Blood the, pressure and the uh, urine, tests, and the urine. Yes, the blood pressure and the urine test. Oh, I said all the necessary tests, as it were. Yeah. Um, so we've also talked about healthcare professionals being aware and trying to ensure that our um, the pregnant women and the uh, people that are predisposed to these conditions are aware and then knowing the necessary things to do. Um, taking it further, what are the steps that the government can take? Because looking at the, the, the statistics that you presented, about 20% of the 70,000 uh, people uh, deaths that occur yearly due to uh, preeclampsia in Nigeria, um, what can the government do to ensure that this is greatly reduced? Hmm. Uh, when it comes to discussing the government, I'm usually not in a, I'm usually in a somber mood because the fact is that the government is not doing too good when it comes to issues of maternal health. And that is why today Nigeria carries the heaviest burden of maternal death in the world. I mean, we're talking about uh, it's almost 70,000 deaths every year. That's a lot, lot of women dying. Nigeria, despite that's almost like 20% of the total number of um, women dying globally, even though we're just about 3% the population. So I guess the most basic thing that I see as a low hanging fruit, and um, I've shared this with all of my colleagues, if, if there's something the government can do that will not break the bank, it has to be simply to identify and let people know that pre eclampsia eclampsia are uh, uh, are scourge. They are probably killing more of our pregnant women, especially in some parts of the north, than any other condition. And it deserves that kind of um, uh, that kind of attention. You you it, it, it baffles me why a government that is aware of this statistics. I can't remember the last time the any head of state or president or Commander-in-Chief mentioned the term pre-eclampsia, you know? So we have a situation whereby our, our, our policy makers don't think it, it's important. It's, instead of just generally making a, an issue of maternal health, maternal health, let us cool down. Why is it that uh, more people are aware of HIV AIDS or aware of, uh, uh, of, of, of COVID? you know, or malaria. I mean, HIV AIDS, with all due respect, is a disease that may kill you in five years' time. Preeclampsia, eclampsia, is a disease that will kill you in five minutes once you start convulsing. So the government has to stop playing the ostrich and let every key opinion leader, every uh, political uh, leader, all peers of government should start mentioning it that there is a condition that if we're able to abate maternal death from preeclampsia, in one school, we'll be able to reduce our maternal mortality ratio by at least 20 percent. You know, let's talk about it at, at, the, at the press briefing. Let's talk about it when the Minister for Health is uh, making a press release. Let's just keep talking about it. Let's make the uh, 22nd of May every year a kind of um, overwhelming deluge of, of information on preeclampsia. And um, because it tends to manifest in pregnancy and because it, it tends to have a sequelae of convulsion, and you know, when it's a superstitious environment, when people convulse, it's misinterpreted <clears throat> to mean all sorts of things. It could be you are being possessed by the Holy Spirit. They are being possessed by demons, depending on which class of the population you are. So please, let people should know that when a pregnant woman, any pregnant woman, is walking down the street, and people ask her, have you had your blood pressure taken? 
have you had your urine tested? And she says, why? She says, because there's a condition called preeclampsia that kills more of our pregnant women than probably any other, you know? So I think that is what the government should do. Thank you very much, sir, Dr. Lawal. It has been very, very, very insightful. Um, I'm very sure our listeners um, have learned a whole lot and um, we're able to tell uh, all the pregnant people around us, our mothers and sisters, uh, the things they need to do and hopefully more awareness um, on uh, preeclampsia and eclampsia will be uh, seen and will be conducted so that more women will be aware and hopefully more research will go into it such that there will be ways to prevent it from happening um, in the first place. Thank you very much, Dr. Lawa. We're happy to have you. Uh, hopefully we'll have you here another time to talk about um, another topic, uh, maybe uh, postpartum hemorrhage, for example. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Have a nice day, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much as well. Um, thank you very much for joining us once again on Afia Health and Lifestyle Interview Series. Uh, hopefully you've been able to learn a lot. Um, look around you. There are so many pregnant people, pregnant women from mothers to sisters. It is time to educate them. It is time to inform them about uh, things that can cause uh, mat uh, maternal mortality. And that includes preeclampsia and so many other things. But of course, what we have learned today is about uh, preeclampsia. Um, they should ensure their blood pressure is checked. Is checked. Um, they should ensure that their urine is tested and Importantly, is a uh, proper antenatal care in a certified um, hospital or primary health care center. That way, um, even if found, it can be monitored and managed in a proper way. We look forward to seeing you next week. We look forward to having you join us in our, on our next interview. Please do well to subscribe and follow our page for more information. Uh, if you have any question, of course, leave them in the comment section and Dr. Lawa will be answering them as you will be, as you will be posting them. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great day.